Hi, in this short video, I will be going over section 4.1 in the IDCC Marine Syllabus with our nutrients, and nutrients are, of course, important. As always, everything here is from my class, uh, so it's non profit, and anyone else can use it, you're more than welcome to. Any mistakes here are mine and mine alone, and do not in any way reflect on Cambridge. By the way, uh, this chapter here, 4.1, uh, if you're doing ITCSE biology, you'll find a lot of similarities here to the first couple of chapters in the ITCSE biology syllabus. So if you're doing that already, all this here should be like something you already know. All right, let's go into it. In biology and therefore in marine science, uh, we talk about nutrients as something that is a substance that is needed for an organism to grow, repair, or as a source of chemical energy. So we have to here separate between the autotrophs, the primary producers, and the heterotrophs, uh, what's needed. Um, but for a plant, for example, it's not enough to have CO2, sunlight, and water. Uh, you also need other nutrients to be able to make proteins to make structures and that's what we're going to talk about here. Proteins are important uh, for all life. Uh, we need them to construct um, enzymes who do all the activity in the cells. We need them for muscle structure. Um, all the amino acids that proteins are made for are synthesized in plants and then they're recycled. So when we eat a tuna and we get the amino acid from that. Those amino acids originally came from algae who just moved up through the food chain. So animals, we can't make our own amino acids, so we have to get them from somewhere else, thereby eating either as a herbivore or as a carnivore. Plants, they can make them themselves if they have the right micronutrients available, mainly nitrogen. Um, the different amino acids are then strung together in a long chain, and those chains then have a secondary and tertiary structure, the way they fold, and that gives us uh, proteins with different functions. Proteins can be used as an energy source also, but in general, um, animals would rather burn carbohydrates or fats before they start burning protein. One gram of protein contains about the same energy as a gram of carbohydrates or the same energy as about half of gram of fat. Carbohydrates are made in plants. It's a byproduct of photosynthesis and that's one of the main reasons why plants do photosynthesis because it's a way to build long organic molecules. It's also a way for plants to store energy and we can have these in short chains or in long chains. A short chain of carbohydrate, we call a monosaccharide or a disaccharide with one or two. Or if it's a long chain, we call a polysaccharide. Um, one of the more important polysaccharides are starch, which is the way that plants, they store uh, energy in the form of carbohydrates. Um, many marine and food chains, they start with the starch that are stored in either microalgaes, macroalgaes, or marine plants, and then it's digested, um, and it's then broken down into the short chains in glucosus, which can then be used for respiration in the animal, or it can also be stored in the animal as glycogen, which is the way that animals, they store carbohydrates for later use. Our third macronutrient is fat, or as they call it in the syllabus, lipids. Uh, fat contains way more energy per gram than carbohydrates and protein does. So it's a very good way to store energy. Um, so if you're an animal who have to do a long migration, um, it's smart to store the energy as fat because then you can store a lot of energy for a relatively small volume. Fat is also an important source of isolation for many marine animals. If you've ever seen a um, walrus, for example, they have a huge layer of blubber, which is an energy source, but it also serves as isolation against the cold. 
uh, fat is also used uh, to get some vitamins. Some vitamins can only be dissolved in fat. Um, so you need uh, fat in the diet to get those. Um, so for marine life, if you have a lot of fat, it could either mean you're very metabolic active, that you might have to move over long distances, or that you need the extra uh, iso insulation to live in cold areas. Then you come to the vitamins. Uh, vitamins are micronutrients, which means you don't need a lot of them, uh, but if you don't have them, usually that will be uh, a source of trouble for the organism. So vitamins, if you have more of them, you don't get better, but if you lack them, you can have an issue. Uh, the Cambridge syllabus here mentions four different vitamins, but uh, no, there are many, many more. These are just the ones that choose to mention here in the IDCSE syllabus. Vitamin A, which is uh, lipid soluble, used for vision and skin. Vitamin B, which is soluble in water, which is very important for energy release, for metabolic function. Um, there are many more different types of vitamin, B6, B12, so on. Vitamin C, which are made in plants, and is very important for skin, teeth, bone and blood vessel, also for immune system. And vitamin D, which we humans can make from sunlight, uh, but in marine food chains, it uh, goes through the food chain, and it's very important for absorption of calcium, for bone structure and teeth, and for the immune system. In general, all these vitamins, uh, any organism who eats their normal like diet will get those vitamins, but if for whatever reason you miss one of those vitamins, that will become a limiting factor either in health or growth of that organism. Then we have minerals, and Cambridge start by listing carbon as a mineral. Um, it's a little bit different because they don't do that in the biology syllabus, but here it's mentioned as a mineral. Basically, you can't make organic molecules without carbon. So carbon is the one big player. Carbon is also the major part of both carbohydrates, fat, and proteins. So it's really not a micronutrient. It's the one big one, to be true. Um, but then we have nitrogen, magnesium, calcium, and iron. Be aware that there are many more. These are just the four that Cambridge have chosen to highlight here to show different... Um, um, minerals and their function. Nitrogen uh, is needed for making protein. Um, and the funny thing is, our atmosphere is full of nitrogen, but since it's N2 with a triple bond, it's very hard for, uh, for organisms to use that. Some bacteria, uh, the cyanobacteria, uh, blue-green algae, can use it from the air. But most other organisms lead, need them in organic form, uh, usually from fertilizer, or stuff like that, or in the case of marine organisms, uh, runoff from rivers. Uh, and that is, of course, used for protein. Then we have magnesium. In plants, it's used for chlorophyll. Uh, in animals, it's used for muscle and nerve function. Calcium, which, of course, is very important in marine organisms, as many of them build shells and structures of calcium carbonate that goes both from snails, from mussels, um, into the big structures made by the corals. And then we have iron, uh, which is used for hemoglobin, which is uh, the important part of binding um, oxygen in the red blood cells. Um, these are just, again, some examples of minerals. And with, as with vitamins, you don't get more healthy if you have more minerals. But if you lack them, well, then that will be an issue. So you only need them up to a certain level to be healthy. In the marine ecosystems, we have a generalized form of uh, recycling nutrients. And the picture chosen here is, is just a basic one. But the idea is that on our surface, we have a lot of sunlight. We have CO2. We have um, water. Uh, so any primary producers who live here are going to produce a lot of organic material if they also have the needed nutrients, such as phosphor, nitrogen, calcium, and so on. In the ocean, many of the nutrients tend to fall into the bottom of the floor as marine snow, and then they get 
kind of stored at the bottom of the ocean. But in a system here where we have runoff from land, we will have a lot of nutrients also going to the surface. Um, that is why we tend to have a much higher primary production closer to land than we do out in the open ocean. Out in the open ocean, we tend to have most of the nutrients at the bottom and the few primary producers are at the top. So only if we have an upwelling or in another way we get nutrient-rich water up to the surface, then we can have a algae bloom. So a general journey from a, like I say, a molecule of carbon. Uh, a molecule of carbon is taken up as CO2 by the algae. And it's now fixated into other carbohydrates or fats or protein inside the algae. Then the algae is eaten by a herbivore. And the herbivore then takes that carbon and places it inside its own cell or store it as fat. The herbivore is then eaten by a carnivore. And again, some of the carbon will then either fall as feces or small pieces that are not eaten. They will fall as marine snow to the bottom of the ocean. Here they are uh, consumed by the tritivores and scavengers. And then we'll have the nutrients at the bottom. The water at the bottom now have a high amount of nutrients, but there's no sunlight. But if we have an upwelling, well, then all that carbon um, or other molecules will come back into the surface and there'll be a chance they'll be taken up again by a primary uh, producer and then the cycle goes off all again. 